welcome to episode 150 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 28th of January. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last week or so. So today I have some knitting, I have some cross stitch, some dressmaking, I have just one or two confessions. <laughs> I have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread in the Ravelry group and I've got some information on my shop update at the very end of the podcast. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find my hand dyed yarns, handmade project bags, stitch markers, higher higher knitting needles, clover crochet hooks and bag making supplies such as wadding and fabrics etc. So we now have over 15,000 subscribers on the channel, that is absolutely amazing and to say thank you I want to do a giveaway. So. One of the prizes is going to be a surprise, it'll be some of the things that I sell in my shop. But the second thing that I've got is a wonderful donation from lovely Zoe from the Pins and Needles podcast. And Zoe and Jenny from Isle About Yarn do a retreat every year. I think that's twice a year normally. But now, because of the pandemic, they're doing an online one. And they've offered me two free passes to go on the online retreat. One for me and one for you guys. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the retreat. So the retreat is called the Nordic Knitting Online Retreat. And it is on the 19th to the 21st of February and there are some brilliant talks planned by Carrie Westerman, Becky from River Knits who's going to talk about colour therapy, Estelle from Midwinter Yarns is going to talk about yarn and mills and there's going to be several Zoom social meetings which is going to be exciting and also there's going to be some marketplace vendors on Instagram stories as well so I'm really excited to join in with that but if you want to win one of those tickets if you just comment down below what you would be knitting if you went to this online retreat and also I'll draw the prize for the 15,000 subscriber giveaway as well if you comment the same thing. So that's really exciting. I will leave a link to Zoe's YouTube channel as well as the information for the retreat in the description bar down below. Um, but I would definitely recommend Zoe's podcast because she's brilliant. I really enjoyed watching her vlogmas as well. So do go and check her channel out. So I'm so excited to join in an online retreat. I've never been on an online retreat before. So that's going to be a bit exciting. I can sit in my pyjamas and do some knitting. I'm not quite sure what I'll be knitting yet though, but I will let you know. So we have a make-along going on in the Ravelry group and on Instagram at the moment and that's called Craft 20 a Day and it's basically doing 20 minutes of a project that's going to take quite a long time, just chipping at it day by day and it's going to run for the whole year so if it's a massive project you can still include it. I'm also doing in the Ravelry group a make-along for all the people that have purchased one of my yarn clubs so that they can share what they've been making with their yarn club yarns and obviously there's spoilers there if you haven't received your current month's yarn yet be careful not to get spoilers from the thread but I have put a warning in the top bar so that's going on in the Ravelry group so let's get on with the knitting shall we so first of all i have a couple of finished objects but they weren't knitted by me these have been knitted by liz which is adam's mum first of all i want to show you this cute hat that she's knitted and it's a beautiful cable hat with a pom-pom and it's knitted in my always colorway that i released last week and this is knitted in a DK Merino base yarn and the pattern is a King Cole pattern and it's pattern number 4414 and I'll leave a link to it in the description bar down below. I'll come up a bit closer to the camera so that you can see those cables. So this is actually knitted flat which is unusual for a hat these days. So Liz gave it back to me once she'd knitted it and then I sewed it up for her. But, and it's also got a really cute pom-pom on the top. So she managed to knit it in 100 grams of the DK Merino and it was almost big enough for the pom-pom but I had to add a little bit of an extra 20 gram mini that I had of the same colourway just to finish it off. 
And also, I made the pom-pom for her because she doesn't like making pom-pom. And I attached it by putting the, the two threads that were attached to the pom-pom through the top of the hat. And then I threaded them through a button and just tied a bow so that if you want to wash it, then you can just undo this little tie here and detach the pom-pom so that you can wash the rest of the hat. I'm not quite sure where I got the trick from, but I think it's really useful. And I think it also makes the pom-pom stand up nicely, having the button there to make it a little bit more sturdy. So I should pop it on for you. This actually, Liz has knitted it for to make for herself. So hopefully I don't stretch it with my big head. <laughs> but there we go. Hopefully that you can see that properly. Ta-da! <laughs> so that's the first one. And Liz has knitted that for herself. But she also knitted another hat which is a more plain style for one of their neighbours. And the pattern is called the Hemp Beanie by Elizabeth Smith. And this is a free pattern. I'll leave a link to it in the description bar down below. Liz used some of my own yarn. And this is again Merino DK, but this time it's in the Don't Stop Me Now colourway. I thought that the blue would be nice and appropriate for a man's hat and it's got little splashes of a sort of darker blue in there it's a sort of a turquoisey blue color with mid blue splashes in there so that one i shall try it on to show you as well Ta -da! i'll turn around again for you hopefully you can see the back properly <laughs> so there we go liz has been busy knitting hats and I was going to block these, but actually I think sometimes if you're blocking ribbon out, it can sometimes stretch it out a bit much. And I wasn't quite sure how tight these were gonna be anyway. So especially with the cables, I didn't wanna sort of spoil the shape. And I think when you've got it on, it doesn't really need blocking anyway. So those are those two. Thank you so much, Liz, for letting me show them on the podcast. So I have been knitting on my Mayfield mitts. And this is a pattern by Erica Mount. And I've managed to finish one of these. Well, I haven't quite finished. I've just got to do about four or five rows just on the thumb there, because they are sort of open. But that won't take me too long. I was really hoping I'd get one completely finished for this podcast. But unfortunately, I only just managed to finish the top of the glove and I haven't sewed the ends in yet so this is a beautiful pattern by Erica Husa and I I feel like my color work isn't the most perfect but I've managed to do it okay I think and almost finished one of the mittens and that's one of my make nine projects as well so I'm really pleased about that so on the other side there's a diamond pattern and some flowery bits at the bottom so I'm on my way to having another pair of finished mitts. The yarn that I'm using is this yarn and it's called Phenol Garn Roma and I'll leave a link in the description bar down below to the website where you can get some yourself. So this is quite a toothy rustic yarn which is great for colour work. So I'm halfway through that project. But this week I've been very distracted by my cosy memories blanket. <laughs> I picked it up again. I don't think I knitted it at all last year. I just felt like I really wanted to knit on this blanket. So I picked it up again. So if I can get it all in shot, I'll have to stand back a bit, I think. So that is how it looks. What I'm doing is I'm using all different colours and shades. I'm trying to do like a chessboard pattern so that I've got the darker and lighter um, interspersed so that so this is a light one, dark one, light one, dark one, and doing the opposite on the next row so that they look like they're planned to be like that. But I'm pretty much just picking um, the yarns for a row and then organising them so that I've got dark light, dark light, dark light. And this week I have finished... So this week I've finished these four squares here. I can't remember but what this one was. This one was one of the yarns that I had with my advent that Jean gave me this year, which was unlabeled, so I don't know who they were. And I also added these two as well. And I'm afraid I can't remember which ones these were because I caked them up ready to put in the blanket over a year ago. Right, <laughs> I also did this little square on the end. And again, I have no clue which yarn this is, but it has been such a pleasure just playing with little bits of yarn. 
So I calculated I needed to do about 156 more squares. So I think if I do three or four a week till the end of the year, then I'll be finished. And I'm going to do an I-cord bind off around the edge. So the width is going to be this width, but I am going to do it wider. So it'll be twice the length there. Um, so what I'm trying to do, I'm not quite sure whether you'll be able to see, is that up to here all the lines are going this way so the squares has, the square has got like a spine in the middle and then once i'd done so many i think i did seven rows i then started to go the other way so it's going to be like a chevron and i've just started the row which is going back in that direction again so i do seven rows of each and the 12 squares wide that way and I did actually do a series of videos of how I do my Cozy Memories blanket. So the first video shows you how I did one square. The second video shows you how I join a square onto that square. And then the third video shows how I was sort of planning to do this orientation of my blanket. And also how you could do it if you wanted to have all the spines going out from the centre of the square. But I'm really pleased about this. I don't think you can really see how lovely it is until you're actually touching it and feeling it. And it's such a lovely memory to look at it and think, oh, I did a little swap with a friend and that's their row. And it just, it's lovely to sort of pick up and have a little bit of memory, a cosy memories blanket. It's knitted in all four ply yarn, mostly merino, but there are some other um, different yarns as well but I've tried to keep it all the same weight and even though it's just four ply yarn because it's a garter stitch with it it makes it slightly thicker and I think it's a lovely weight and I've done it with 2.75 millimeter needles because I'm quite a tight knitter and that gives me a relatively tight gauge for a blanket so there we go what I've been doing as well is I've been sewing all my ends in as I go because I just couldn't face sewing in a million squares um, at the end but there we go Ta -da! so that is my knitting for this week but I do have some cross stitch to share with you and here it is so this is the country cottage needleworks winter welcome cross stitch pattern and this is how I've gone on with it so far you can see that I've done round the windows and then I'm just starting to do the outside of the house. So the, the very pale blue here is a hand dyed thread and it's called Petit Maison and it's one of the classic colourworks threads. And then I've just done the door and the windows in white like the pattern instructs. I don't think that my contrast between the Petit Maison and the white is as obvious as it is in the pattern it looks a bit lighter the blue to me um but i think i think it'll still look nice so i'm doing this on a 28 count linen oh i forgot to say my little needle keeper is from chapel view crafts and it's got some lovely ice buns on it i've got uh, no end of these lovely little needle keepers from cheryl who's chapel view crafts Oh, and I was going to say, actually, I've started using these clover tapestry needles with a gold eye. See if I can get close enough to show you this. It's got a golden eye there. I think I probably need to change my needle soon because it's tarnishing a little bit. But I do find that these last quite a lot longer than the John James tapestry needles that I was previously using for cross stitch. And... I'm really pleased with these ones so I'm going to keep using them. I will leave a link in the description bar down below to where I got mine from. So next I have some dressmaking to chat to you about. So in possibly the end of November I think, <laughs> no actually way before then I cut out Adam a pair of trousers that I was going to sew him and last weekend I finished them. <laughs> so this is just a black pair of trousers and I got it from the Great British Sewing Bee, Sewing Your Own Wardrobe. And I would definitely not recommend this trouser pattern for somebody who's never done a fly closure before or anything like that. It's not the best instructions in there, but I have made these for Adam before and they do fit really nice. So I thought I'll just whip up another pair for the same pattern because I know they fit him. 
The original pattern had belt loops on, but because he doesn't really wear a belt, I didn't bother putting them on because it just seems a waste of time to me. And I thought the it would just look nice and smooth and neater than it would with, with the belt loops. So I did those and I did some pocket lining in the same fabric as the outside. Normally I'll do a lighter weight fabric, but I thought actually it might keep him warm um, having a thicker pocket in there. But when I was sewing the fly up, I'd done such a good job. I was so pleased with myself. And then I'd sewn something not quite neat enough. So I decided to unpick it. Don't unpick black thread on black fabric in the evening. <laughs> And you can't see what you're doing because I ended up making a tiny hole in the fabric so I thought oh no I didn't have enough fabric to cut out another leg panel because it was basically this one and I thought well I'm, I don't want to waste it it seems such a waste I've spent all that time doing the, the rest of the fly and all that fabric would just be wasted if I just abandoned it so I thought what can I do to fix it I thought well I could either put a patch on it and I thought well it is going to be, you know, it's going to be quite uh, a, an odd place to have a patch. Really. So what I did, I don't know if you can see. Ah, you can see just about because the lights are over. It's um, overexposing so you can just about see what I've done. So it was down here somewhere where I made the little hole. So I used the darning foot actually to stitch over the hole in a little circle. And then I just did some swirly stitching all the way down the fly area just to make it a detail <laughs> and actually you can't really see it very well at all um, and he gets a pair of trousers otherwise I would have had to abandon and thrown away now Adam doesn't work in a very smart place he works in a workshop he fixes computers and things so he doesn't need to dress super super dressy and he normally wears a top that goes over his fly anyway so he won't be able to you won't be able to see the swirly bits very much which is good <laughs> but I did finish them I'm glad I didn't waste them really it just would have been a waste of fabric which I hate to do so the pattern itself is quite a slim leg trouser and I used a pair of his trousers that he already had to measure how long they needed to be and that was easy enough. Like I said before though, the fly instructions aren't brilliant in that book so I used a tutorial by Sew Over It and I just felt that was much easier to follow than trying to follow the, the pictorial instructions in the book. I don't feel that there's enough actual diagrams to explain what they're trying to say for somebody who hasn't done a fly before. So I definitely recommend that tutorial by Sew so Over It though. I think the last pair I did with this, I used like a, a hook closure rather than a buttonhole, but I used a buttonhole on this for this time. And I actually used some fray check just to put around the buttonhole once I'd stitched it and cut it open just to make it so that it lasts a bit longer so it doesn't fray at all. And I got the fabric from the market in Norwich actually, a couple of years ago must have been. And it's a nice cotton twill fabric so that'll be nice and soft against the skin but also nice and easy to wash as well. So those are those. Barbara couldn't put them on because she's a little bit of a larger lady like me, bless her. <laughs> so actually that little mistake and modification that I made actually made me think that you could possibly do sort of free motion stitching over sort of skirt panels and things if they do get damaged with wear and make things last a little bit longer. So something to think about for the future. But next I have my confession section. So first of all, I have these turning tools that I picked up from Prim. And I think I just picked these up from Amazon actually, but they were recommended to me by the lovely Eva of Coco and Flora. They certainly seem like they're going to be useful because I was using a sort of straw and bodkin technique to turn things inside out and basically the, the straw that I was using was quite thick so sometimes if you want to do something smaller and thinner something that's got a finer straw on will be more useful. So this has got three sizes which is really great. So I shall let you know how I got on with those. This is a small, medium and large, pretty much the same as the sort of straw and bodkin method. Just sort of made into three sizes really, so they'll be really useful. So thank you Eva for suggesting those. Secondly, I have 
these things. So there's a thing called that purple fang that people use for quilting for for poking corners out of things when they're turning them and you can get hold of these on on Amazon and all sorts of places but I was looking on Amazon and actually if you bought one I think it was sort of six pounds but I found these I think they're basically copies and you get five different colours for seven pounds or something like that and they've got a little tip at the top which has a quarter inch measure there which I thought was quite useful and quite a fine little pokey tool on the other end and a little hole if you want to thread anything through anything and there was five in the set so I thought that those would be really useful um, for turning things and poking corners out and having five is great because you can have them a couple of places around your craft room you never sort of lose them buried underneath projects and things <laughs> <laughs> so those are good I'm going to leave a link in the description bar down below but I did get them from Amazon I think this one's my favourite <laughs> so that's my confessions I haven't been too bad this week <laughs> lots of gadgets this time so I've got one question from the Ask Me Anything thread in the Ravelry group. I did have a lady send me a message um, through my website rather than doing it on the Ravelry group, but that's absolutely fine. So normally if you have a question, there's a Ask Me Anything thread on the Ravelry group and you can pop your question in there and then I normally sort of basically answer it or just say I'm going to answer it in the podcast next time. But you can email me or send me a message through the website as well. Jan was asking, what is Adam's job? Does he work from home? So I sort of answered it a little bit on the podcast earlier. But he is an electronics engineer and he basically fixes computers and audio and sometimes televisions. And so he basically works in a workshop. He's still working in the in the workplace at the moment because they're not having the main front of the shop open so he's just basically got his own little area where he's sort of confined to so there we go Jan hope that answers your question so lastly I've got my shop update information so when I'm knitting my cozy memories blanket I use these zing needles just because I like the colours really and it's nice to have um, some special needles that I use for my cozy memories blanket so these are knit pro zings and 2.75 millimeter needles so I keep these specifically for my cozy memories blanket and I like these little clover bungs that I put on the ends of the needles so that when I've stopped knitting on them I can actually put both of the bungs onto the one needle and stop the stitches from coming off if I'm stopping halfway through a square so they're useful and I thought actually wouldn't it be nice to have some in my shop so I've picked up some of these packs and it comes in a set of six I think and there's three of the turquoise and three of the orange ones I have had mine absolutely ages and basically the little knobbly bits off the very end have come off because I've been poking them on and off the needles quite a lot but I really like these just because they look like cute little creatures <laughs> which which is really nice I also have the little panda needle stoppers as well in the shop which are from higher higher but these are ones are clover ones so I thought it'd be nice to have these as an option as well so that you can use them on two millimeters to 6.5 millimeter needles or US size 0 to 10 and a half I think and I just think it's quite nice because you've got a different colour for each end of the needle. So those will be in the shop this Friday at 7pm GMT. That's all that's going in the shop this week because I'm really busy with orders from last weekend, especially with the yarn clubs. And I just wanted to mention that the yarn clubs, if you have purchased them, they're not going to be shipped until the 5th of February, so the end of next week. I have still got a few for sale in the shop if you want them but they will be taken down uh, on Sunday evening. If you do want to get a, one of the yarn clubs, either the music from the movie sock sets or the mixtape minis, do pop over to the website and purchase them before Sunday. So I think that's all I've got for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you next week. Bye.